Reading! My name is Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome back to Mask of the Rose. Last time, we had some fun talking with Re good old Reginald, Bishop of Southwark, and all that stuff. And uh, had some shopping and all that. Oh yeah, and there was also the small unimportant business of or a person being murdered, or at least a person dying, and our pa uh, and our friend being framed for murdering him. And now we finally get, it, get to get into the whole meat and potatoes of this game, the detective stuff. Spend delicious time with Archie on a prison ship. Uh, maybe they have conjugal visits, I don't know. Talk to Archie about Archie's arrest. I mean, surely, I feel like they should be just talk to Archie about his arrest. It feels a bit... Ah, find out, find out how to go on publishing revelations about the Ministry. That sounds good. And I should bring the Ministry badge. Just like this, I shouldn't go anywhere near the prison hall without Harajit. I'm a walking advertisement to robbers. <laughs> All right, let's get here and here. Blend in a bit more. Just like this. Um, maybe if I get rid of the... Um... Maybe just this. Just like this, I can sneak over to the Hulk without a Hajid and visit Archie on my own. Alright. No locals will bother me. Alright, let's go. Yeah. You're taking a risk coming here without Hajid. If you don't watch out, they'll pack you up in the ungulate beside me. And then where will we be? In the ungulate. My recent memory of Archie. Hey, remember that time when you got uh, when you got uh, imprisoned? Well, not that recent memory. I was th thinking recently of how studious you were before the fall. Always reading about poisons and drugs. Maybe this isn't the best thing to bring up when he's been arrested for poisoning someone. <laughs> no harm in that. The medical question. And I wasn't at Chapman very long before. At night on the angulate, sometimes you can hear things singing in the water. I hear the, heard them before, but never as clear as this. Are there, are there words? Lyrics? Aye. Most nights I cannot remember them by morning. Yes, sometimes I have sight of a kingdom underwater. Deep green water and a, and a throne without a king. Makes a change from the rest of the ship. Even if it is your mind playing tricks. Or something worse. Or that. I don't even know what that would be. Isn't the rats in the hole? There's a great number of those, but they do not go much for song. Last night I did hear to remember. Last night they were singing of something to do with Parliament. All the ministers drowned. B building of the parli of Parliament did end in the Thames. I haven't been there to see the site. There have been sketches in the newspapers. I hate to think what became a Grizz's uncle. There are things I'd like to share with the publisher you have. Some additional thoughts I've come across. I need some of them might different now. Not just to tell the truth. Some of them more in nature are a call to action. A manifesto, so to say. Hopefully not a communist manifesto. If you can think of what's best to tell folk. We cannot move too slowly now. A thought occurs to Archie. If Horatia is in poor spirits, she should ask around the vicar. Beaches are up. I think she's a soft spot for him. Though I'd be grateful if you don't say, uh, say I said so. Yeah, that's Kessels. This is the whole... 
<laughs> this seems like a good moment for it. They're standing awfully close. You shouldn't do that. I'm in a cross mood. I'll take my chances. Back in Scotland, a person might take it as an amorous advance standing so close. London manners, of course. You might just be practicing for the omnibus. <laughs> uh, you're toying with me. He leans in the rest of the way to meet me. Archie kisses as though I might be the thing that saves him. Which I might. As though this might be an experimental, experimental cure. What would you say were the effects of that trial? A success? Is the patient improved? Oh, well, the first dose had a notable effect. But you know, it's always best to follow a regimen. Doses on successive days and plenty of observation. We stay like this for a long time, until we're forced to remember that the rest of the world is out there. Why is... okay, here we go. Hmm. I don't think hope to save London will be very persuasive to <laughs> call them to action. I mean, maybe. Mr. Pages' purpose is both unknown and unknowable. I collected all the tales of Lovedick could find. Typical Londoner was determined to preserve London. The citizens of London contrived an inventive form of rebellion and self-protection. It's a start. Although, hang on, he didn't actually tell me how to contact his publisher. That was what I went there to do. Probably visit. Uh, visit Rachel. Hmm. Yes. Uh, I could talk to Mr. Pages about it. Yes. Hmm. Maybe not while Grizz is there, though. Well, will she be there? Hang on. It doesn't say. Just collecting information, just as my job is. The more often I visit the neighborhood of the bazaar, the more it seems unlike any other part of London. Yes. It is... similar in some ways. It's In some ways it fits the surrounding area, but only because the area is twisted around it. When I try to imagine where it might have come from, my mind halts. If I can guess, I find I don't want to. That's... odd. Undercon Grizz has been agitated. She requested that we intervene in a matter of the Crown Court. This is not our custom. <laughs> the Justice of London concerns many things that do not interest us. In fact, under Khan Grizz herself instructed that each ministry be circumscripted. Under Khan. Hmm. I see there's still there's still some uh, leftover verbiage and vocabulation from the fourth city. We observe an inconsistency in this. It causes us to question her judgment. Is this power hungry? Remain unreliable. Interesting. 
unreliable might drive. Uh, if I'm wondering, like, some of these might be to drive a wedge between them or something. Unreliable might do it. Power hungry might actually be encouraging to the pages. Humane, though. Definitely. Um, yes. She may not be thinking clearly this once. It is harder to stick to those rules when a friend's life is involved. It is a weakness. We will have to account for it in our dealings with her. Do you have anything more? Oh, is that the end of the discussion? The trick is not to look at the back of the penny at all. What? This one is not a citizen of London. It will come from points west and is not capable of love. Do you have any more? That's an interesting. Got used to the transaction now. Pages go through this pages of this census with growing interest, studying some pages closely. Then suddenly it stops and throws the sheaf on his desk. She is known to us. She is not from the fifth city at all, or even the first. Hell exchanged its leaders late in the fourth city. We were otherwise occupied. We are infamiliar with the newcomers. We surmise she is ambitious or an exileman. Do you anything more? Yeah, Mr. Peter is pleased enough with my information to give me two pennies. What a muscular character. An admirable development. Blood into muscle men. Enough of my official duties for the moment. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I was hoping for a little bit. I was hoping to actually, actually, you know, question him about it, but apparently not. Whatever. Instead, I suddenly done with questioning. With, with didn't question him at all. Okay, let's be Rachel then. Yes. <laughs> Make it seem like I'm operating on a bit more authority than I actually am. That seems like a good choice. Offer my condolences. I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, what was her voice again? Right. I know so many other people have lost someone this year. But mine was murdered. Mine was unnecessary. You don't seem particularly displeased about that. David's death wasn't an accident or misfortune or fate. At that moment, someone can be heard at the door. Oh, fate? What do you mean fate? There were so many new graves when we buried him. Maybe it's... Mr. Milton is here to see you, miss. Here? Now? Do you want me to say you aren't at home? No, you can't tell him that. He'll know I'm here and... But maybe you had better say... Don't strain yourself finding an excuse. I promise to depart again before I have entirely worn out my welcome. Milton, no, please, you're very welcome. He nods to me. Poor Rachel. I came because I heard your unhappy news. I ought to be wearing black. There's been so little time. I did have a black gown. My mother died last year, but we handed it down to a cousin on the Landau side. Her husband died in the fall, and she needed something suitable. She used to sit in the parlor after supper, in the second hand gown and a glossy wig, and drink a great deal of David's wine. Ah, the widow Nathan. I take it she had much to say about the trials of having no one to support her. She never did recognize that character as herself. I found Rachel about putting real people in the story. Eh, hmm. I'm- that would be a bit hypocritical coming from me. 
Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Defend the overshot widow. It seems cruel to mock such a woman. Just so. I wouldn't take Rachel Landau on lightly. Phoebe said you've buried the body. At Ball's Pond. Very soon after the death? It's our tradition. How do you avoid burying someone alive? See where this goes. That's a genuine concern, even outside of the Nath. The burial, Rachel? David was dead. Unambiguously, grotesquely dead. I thought you said- You said he was poisoned. What do you mean, grotesquely dead? So, there are poisons out there that can create a, a, induce a state of living death. You know, uh, uh, keep people in a state of seeming death for qu uh, an extended period of time. Potentially causing brain damage once they're revived, but potentially not. Have you been back to the grave? Is it undisturbed? This is this how you can comfort mourners in your society? We don't mourn the dead. Your inexperience shows. He's clearly trying to tell you something. Clearly. Let him talk. Uh, like. Uh. It isn't necessary here. I've been. You've been here long enough, is what you've been. God damn it! Shut up, Rachel! Phoebe! Phoebe! I called you! Miss? Did you be wanting tea for the guest? I did not, and don't play the fool. I know you've had your ear to the door. See Mr. Milton out. I could have found my own way. At least one of us here is going to observe the civilities, and it seems I'm the only one up to it. Miss Landau, I'm very sorry, but... Please, go. Rachel! This isn't just him being in uncivil, he's clearly trying to tell you something. And then the last word for Archie. You've had the wrong man arrested. Whatever your odd friends say. Does no one down here know how to com comfort the mourners? Sometimes there's more important things than comfort, Rachel! Fuck's sake. Hmm. Novelize the affair. Could you use a scan- what? Oh, just realized I was still waiting for the sailor's top. I, f I was intending to change that. He was wrong, not having Archie at his seat. We'll have him home again soon. It's not as simple a matter as I hoped, but we'll get to it. I give an edited description of my visit to Archie today. Mainly to say that he's there, and hasn't yet been eaten by rats, or thrown overboard by fellow prisoners. Or ca uh, his captives, for that matter. I'm glad you were able to get to him. I've been meaning to go, but it wasn't possible today. Perhaps on another occasion. The vicar's got a new spring in his step. This sermon today was calling for practical action. It said something about faith alone not being enough. We can't expect God to do all the work. I'm no learned doctor of the church, but I feel we had a reformation over this very issue. See, just there's no hope down here. <laughs> That's a bit. Were you more drawn to him or less? I ought to say more, but I'm not sure it makes a difference. There was a fire in his belly I'd not seen before. His preaching was very red-faced. He's not ill, is he? 
Uh, lament Archie's absence. If only Archie was here, he'd know what to prescribe. And if the earth hadn't opened and swallowed us all. No use griping. Archie's there and we're here. We must make the best of it. I hope he isn't ill. That'd be ironic. Oh no, you mean the other guy. Oh, they meant Archie. <laughs> Second. I'm not going to St. Dustin's for Sunday service. The vicar there has notions. St. Dustin... Hang on. I remember that name. Yes, I definitely remember that name. Notions indeed. Diligently. Alright, not much progress. Especially with Rachel running interference for Milton. Or against Milton, rather. Another morning, another newspaper. This morning's lies open on the table. River through London, no longer to be known by its former name. Londoners warned of strange creatures emerging from waters. I'm not too Yes, yes, yes. No, you don't have to keep saying that. Either. Let's see. Got to recall the past yesterday. Um, stranger across the way. The basement window is level with the feet of passers-by. On the night of the fall, I saw unshod feet, curved and taloned, clasping onto the cobblestones to avoid being shaken off. The creature was bigger than a man, but it walked hunched over. It paced out deliberate steps to the curbstone, opposite Mrs. Chapman's, and on the stone face it wrote letters of fire. It did not look like the languages of China or India. Seen all sorts of writing on the sides of crates coming come from o overseas, and not one of them looked like this. Come the morning, that house was gone, and its neighbors on each side were sharing a party wall. A missing block, or house rather. and f follow up on what he was saying earlier. So what do I owe the aggravation? I want to ask you if there's anything I can help you with. I have lived through the transition of one city to another. It is curious to see who has come back and who has not. Like a man have gone into hiding and have not yet slithered out again. Tentacled men? They may also have been women. They did not dress distinctly. A forlorn and slimy people. They made no stories of their own. I do not think the condition springs on people unawares. The meant for the tribulations of this unhappy meal. It seems they suffered much. Oh, they bore it with admirable equanimity. I am not sure they knew they were allowed to resent their treatment. They made noises, they congregated. Now and then, a new anatomical fad swept the congregation, and they'd have one limb extra. They had no culture, but a little music, and that was less Nightingale than Mallard. I do not know what became of them. Perhaps if one lifts up the rocks of the old city, one might find their remains pooled like a melted gelatine. During the fall, when I was indisposed, I dreamt of them. Blo Floating in an amniotic ocean. In the water, I thought I grasped the meaning of their dissonant chorale. 
But there has been no trace of them since. Hmm. There are others here, still alive. I'd like to meet- I should like to meet them. It is unlikely. The last city drowned in bitter milk. But if any live, they are likely underground. Well, more underground. <laughs> there have been no sightings west. Hell would know. They may be beyond the Z, but I am not certain they can swim. Oh. That's ironic, considering their tentacle nature. And I know for certain that certain creatures related to them can swim quite well. Or at least float. Well, no, swim as well, now that I think about it. Will it really be submerged? Caverns, crevices, openings in the city. That would be your best bet. I she would know if anyone does. Alright, that wasn't helpful. Not from the whole Archie business. For a moment, no one speaks. Yeah. What is the nature of your work here? I am a gentleman of leisure, though I have devoted myself to cultivation of the arts. London is so small, I feel sure we'll meet again, kiddo. We can exchange further tokens of distrust next time. I do not like milk. <laughs> I can feel a frown forming on my face. Doesn't matter the clock, I can... Ah. Beneath London. Hmm. Should really figure out what the fuck is she's up to in, in the basement. No, uh, I mean, we've got some some clues here. I mean, tentacles, tentacled men, and uh, ten uh, like the tentacles underground. London, tentacled men that are most likely underground. You can see the true lie. She is in the basement, gathering items off the shelves. She already has a basket full of papers and maps, and even one or two books. I recognize one of them as Archie. Archie's books. Help me burn them before they give Harjit the wrong idea. What? Is, there's seriously no option to say, no, let's not burn books. Sweet, but don't put that on me. I'm not carrying your conscience for you. You gotta do that yourself. Seriously? <sighs> Fuck's sake. I've just gotta either go. I've just gotta go along with this, no matter what I do. Even the, the with the only option being to either actively help or just leave. I don't like that. That's just that's such an obvious, such an obvious failure of game design. I'd have no choice but to either. To go along with it, either, either eagerly or just passively. Whatever. I'll just not even take the choice. I she sighs when I show my face. I think just my presence has reminded her of her lodgers, and that reminds her of Archie. She hasn't gotten to inhabiting that grief comfortably yet. Good afternoon, friend. I hope you're as well as can be expected. I recount the newspaper story. The the Thames is no longer supposed to be called that, which is great because that's a stupid fucking name. I what? How the fuck is it? Why is that pronounced that way? That's so retarded. Oh, 
They recommended it henceforth be named the Purchased River, or the Legitimately Acquired Estuary. As usual, I'll make a black joke of it. And what? <laughs> uh, I don't hold with the fall being trenched up over and over. And what was that black joke? Or was that the black joke? Yeah. Living through it was bad enough all on its own. I mean, if it wasn't, then it wasn't a very good joke. Up there, we had a subtle way of doing things. Traditions, institutions. We're lost without those. It's another kind of dark. Horatia nods along, even if finishes a few of my sentences for me. That's weird. Horatia digresses into an anecdote about a house that had caught fire, and all the children who had come out to warm themselves by the blaze. That's Horatia's advice about resisting the masters. But we cannot trust the masters. Supposed, indeed. What would you do about it? How would we manage if that were, the, if that were true? I would just do what I'm doing. I don't put any trust in them. I just don't mean to rile them. But there's only one thing you can do. Keep the people close to you alive. That's all any of us can hope for. <laughs> if only you knew. There's something I need for dinner. Would you be willing to go? Sure. Of course I will. Thank you. You're a kind soul. She goes into the basement. She's down there for so long I start wondering if she's coming back. When she comes back, she has an assemblage of empty jars, which she piles into a bag for me. Take them to the market and get them filled, as many as you can. Oil first, then solids, whatever they've got. Don't let them sell you more than one jar of cricket flour. We can use it, but we don't go through much. As for the purple mushrooms, make sure they're dead. Don't accept the live ones. How will I know? If it jumps out of the jar, it's not dead. Alright then. Hopefully she gave me some money, or is she expecting me to do this all on my own dime? This takes a long time. Half the stalls are already empty. Half of the remaining stalls are not offering anything we'd want. But I finished Horatio's commission in the end. And that takes exactly as long as a short conversation. I imagine. It isn't long until dinner is served. Alright. A few minutes of preparation. Cared for their own. Yeah. Hershia murmurs over her plate. A blessing, I think, for the food and for Archie, too. Grizz brought home some extra supplies today. I was able to do something that almost resembled cooking. And what is and what was my efforts? Chopped liver? No, chopped liver would be a godsend down here. <laughs> I'm at Horatia's hard work. Your suppers are always delicious. You're very welcome. Flattery should be persuasive. They're always as delicious as possible in the circumstances. Exactly. And we have better circumstances today. Curious for what this would result in. This whole thing. Crumbs here, a spill there. It'll only take a few extra minutes to clear away, but it's a signal. No red tied up for you lot. day remain in the season of confessions. Another morning, another newspaper. This morning's lies open on the table. Masters announce increased biscuit ration. Hang on, I've seen this before. Horatia and Grizz tart. Only troubles me about the stranger who marked the curb. No shit. <laughs> what part? Oh, what part is the thing that bothers you? The talons? The sigils? The way the house was gone the next? <laughs> so after what? Whatever. 
Once I peered out of the basement window and saw a figure in on the street, my eyes were level within feet. Bigger than a man, but watch hunched over. I remember this before, but I didn't know what I was seeing in that memory. It was a master of the bazaar, a creature of the height and shape of Mr. Page's, but its robes were sooty, not stained with ink, as I recall. Sooty. Fires, maybe? Alright. No. What's that? Another visit to Rachel. Hopefully we'll be able to get something done here, rather than... Good morning, kiddo. I find I keep thinking about the same things. Do you know what an inquest is like? Yes, somewhat. <laughs> I didn't know, and now I can't let it go. I had to be held right away, immediately, when David died. It had to be done and finished so we could bury him. That was the coroner, a coroner and a random 12 men he found willing. Residing in the upper room at the Rising Sun. We carried up David's body and put it on a table, after we'd cleaned it as well as we could. He'd been sick a few times while he was dying. We did what we could, and the gin fumes covered the smell, I imagine. As for the, at least for the members of the inquest jury. Right. Dreadful. These are terrible times. Mitchell makes a few flattering remarks. Okay then. What an odd thing to do. Then it was just me and Phoebe, the only witnesses, being interrogated by a lot of these men. We were not sober, not sensible, and not of our beliefs. Phoebe stood by me and held my hand, and for that I will be grateful to her until the day I die. They wanted to perform an autopsy on David. It wouldn't have been more than a butchery. Look for poisons inside him. So they will talk now and cry later. Stop crying and tell me what happened. You, give, you can give vent to your feelings later. My brother would tell you I'm not very biddable. I said no. They could plainly see he'd been poisoned and it didn't need checking on. <coughs> you fucking idiot. Wait a minute. Idiot. Maybe not. Maybe this was a smarter move than I, than I thought. Oh, for sure. I'm still entirely certain that it was a ridiculous thing to do. That certainly is an impediment to justice. That might not be as foolish as I initially thought. No, we didn't want an autopsy unless it was to check for an infe for infectious disease. They didn't like that, but I but I yelled and they let me have my way, like a toddler. So they bickered and leered and pried upon David's pried open David's eyelids. The end of it was that they wrote out a warrant for Archie's arrest. And I've never been more grateful for a thing to be over. I'll bet. The sooner it's over, the less likely. Well, never mind. See just the value of it for a writer. It's over now, and he saw something most writers would not. It's not a story for the Lily of London. I couldn't watch that scene from a distance. I just had to stand there in the middle of it and wait for it to end. Mm, it's running interference. There's a brief lull in the conversation. You find me at a difficult time. Oh? My publisher writes to say that if I do not produce chapters more quickly, I will be replaced. Oh yeah, that's the difficult part about this time. He'll hire someone to complete the novel according to his best sense of its current trajectory. His! Do you know who it is my publisher thinks to assign? Mr. Huppum! A man, and a Christian of course, will cram the story full of orphans and moral improvement. I don't think you know Mr. Huppum very well. But... 
my publisher says, Upham is remarkably reliably timely in the production of new pages. Yeah, Mr. Huffam, yeah, is for, as you probably are aware from the name, one Charles John Huffam Dickens. The, a fantastic writer. Certainly a better one than this bent. I like that she t uh, that her only compl- uh, like, straight up her complaints are that he's a man and a Christian. Fuck off! You cunt. Mr. Huffam is- I'd say he's ten times the writer that you are, but that's absurd. Ten times zero is, well, you can guess. Yeah. Whatever one says, he cannot be faulted for speed. I place no hope whatever in his being able to render my characters, however. I wouldn't put it past him to make my he heroine convert. Wait. Wait, I have an idea. David and Phoebe are no help to me. But you, Captain, have been going all about town, collecting people's personal details. Not only that, but you have access to the bazaar. You know what the masters are doing. This is an odd segue. We've spoken before, but we can make this more formal. You can help me with plots. Oh, I see. Some of the other, some other concerns. I'm sorry for the situation, but I have other things to attend to. I'd be happy to offer recompense, or perhaps you don't need paying, but I can speak well of you to my publisher. Picture your name among my literary friends, if you have any inclination of that sort. I can imagine you might not. Some of them are ghastly people. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it would be an excuse to converse with you further, perhaps. Oh, very well. What do you have in mind? I need a plot about my, how my heroine recovers from her betrothal to someone left behind on the surface. Just a skeleton of how it happens. I can do the rest. If you can drive a way for her to end the business, that will be very welcome. All of my thoughts have proven insipid. Eh, might as well. Anything would do. What attraction? Anyways, to the, sub to the subject of her artistic friend. Rachel tell uh, falls into tell telling me stories of Milton's salon. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't think I, uh, yeah, I imagine they're pretty guessy folks. I wouldn't want to associate with people who regularly go to a devil's salon. It is attended mostly by writers and poets, especially daring poets will some, sometimes attempt a reading, but Milton's side commentary has proven a det deterrent to the softer bellied. He has no patience with work that's made to pattern. If it's a story about the uncomplaining suffering of wives, servants, children, or dogs, there is also a strict rule against pains to the faithfulness of Penelope or Ruth or the Virgin Mary. If anyone dares say anything like that, he quips it out of existence. That sounds like a challenge. Mm. But I imagine the sort of people who frequent devil salons are easily cowed. Or perhaps that would be goaded. <laughs> no, that's silly. She goes on like this for some time, introducing me in turn to all the characters of that world, whether highborn or not. I should be elsewhere. I publish her will be sending around a messenger at any moment. Goodbye, then. Uh, feeling are stronger than ever? What feelings? Whatever. I shake my head to clear it. The munitions are gone. All that it was. On another errand today. Hmm. Neighborhood watch.
Not seeing any good options for actually advancing my damn. If I have him show me a route. night of the fall, I looked out and saw a hunched figure, drawing blazing sigils on the walls. Who the fuck starts a conversation like that? I just came in! <laughs> they were so bright I could see them from across the, room, the street, in darkness. The thing looked like a master. I go on for some time, with no effort to hide how frightening the whole business was. The description becomes more frank as I go on. Harjit listens, nodding. I have, perhaps, created some trust between us. Rashid hints that I should say a bit more about myself. Most of it in my difficult childhood. I sketch in a little of my family history, the shabby housing of my birth, my father and uncle working at the docks, the smells and sounds that surrounded me growing up. I pepper the stories the most outrageous and silly of events, with special attention to the accidental near drowning of an imported elephant. Impressive indeed. You are an inspiration to the neighborhood. I hope they will notice and emulate you. He does not say it, but I have often noticed. He's the one the neighborhood children notice. Just yesterday, a little boy put on a blue coat and strode several times around the courtyard. It seems I have passed some test. Alright. Arm with something, menace eradicated shop. Cavern of tentacled creatures. Yeah. Do you know how to get to the Cavern of Tentacled Creatures? I believe I know what you mean. Do you? That was a long shot, but alright. Hoshi shows me the way, as he did before. At certain points, he makes me look up at the stalactites above and fix the relationship in my mind. They sparkle with something other than stars. Don't treat the stars like constellations. They do not stand still. Warrens of Amber, a warren of brooding tunnels and resinuous deposits. Arjit takes me as far as the cavern entrance as he just I watch my back. The descent is steep, the caverns lightless and treacherous. I walk in the dripping dark for a very long time. Who else ever been this way? Will I ever return? Until at last, a light. What are you doing down here? Crashing about in the dark like an escaped sorrow spider. My friend and I heard you from miles up below. The sound was vexing him. And, more importantly, vexing me. <coughs> like a grim line, but I suppose we'll all be buried in the end past your feeble fatalism some centuries ago. When the worst both happens and ceases to continue, one has to revise their expectations. I have been here a very long time. My name is Bark... My name is Barkjen. Barkjen. I used to be a person of consequence. A person of some importance, you could say, or, or pro... Something. My city predates yours, though it is now gone. Yours fell on it but I do not hold it against you. The fourth city had already gone to the dogs, and worse. Compliment her appearance after being many centuries. And you don't look a day over 30. Ha! Your usual line. Adjusted upwards and downwards according to the self-awareness of the recipient, no doubt. Ah, well. I could I, I, it would have been funny here to say that she didn't look a day over a hundred or something, something like that. I ceased to count the days and tried to send it to the amber bats. My appearance has become an abstraction to me, but it is good to know the rubbery men were not lying about the restorative properties. It seems I best I escort you into the caverns if you mean to explore. There are things down here it would be best not to fall into. You may not take my arm. And my friend would welcome company. They say some talking at me. 
She leads me deeper into the darkness. I have been watching your city for some time. I have made a few trips to the market above, and bartered for what I could with what little we have. I have observed that Londoners are an excitable breed. It is in this spirit I warn you not to be alarmed at the appearance of my friend. He cannot help it. Give me one of the tentacle people Milton mentioned. Do they possess many tentacles? Oh, you are unusually informed. I assume something else survived then. The Collins, of course. Or the yellow-dyed enemies. It was too much to be hoped. They all died. She mutters under her breath. It sounds rather like, save one. Save one? He is of that people. Though people barely describes them. His people are from far away, or long ago. They emerged centuries ago from these caves. I do not know how deep their roots run. They do not resemble us. They do not think like us. They do not act like us. But they do not mean to harm us. It is not far now. She leads me through dark and twisting caverns for a very long time. It feels like days. Hi. This is Bata Chikan. It is not his name, but what he has permitted me to call him. Names are unknown to his people. He is a man of surprising flexibility. Hmm. Perhaps rubbery man is the more suitable translation. Though of course, he is not a man, but he has insisted upon the masculine. Good man. I have not wished to dispute this. Ask how accurate the title surprising is surpassing flexibility is. <laughs> uh, that could be taken as flirting. And that title is because Because he is made of tentacles. I suggest you cast any other unfortunate possibilities from your mind. Natasha Khan does not seem displeased. I refuse to translate that. You are the first to venture down here. Though secrecy has grown harder and harder of late. But Khan insisted we get as close to the surface as we could. I told him it was only a matter of time, and I was right. But Khan makes a series of plangent honks. The gesture is obvious. The surface. There are others of his kind. Many in deeper places than here. They sheltered me from the dissolution of my city. They have sent us from the vat to be their emissary. I have been his eyes and ears while we waited to see what would become of your new city. I have even learned your language. What under heaven happened there? Such an ugly, polygamous tongue. Fuck you. Ah, I believe we have tea. Will you take a cup? Also, I noticed that you learned our language. Otherwise... <laughs> Batacha Khan makes a series of frantic hops, as though to dissuade me. I'll, uh... I couldn't possibly. How disappointing. Is there an error in how I make it? Offered to show her a London method of making tea. It is slow, without kettle and only campfire and ancient porcelain. There is no milk. What results is sweet and bitter, the sourness leavened with too much sugar. It is not unlike what I normally drink. Unspeakable. Abominable. If you are not finishing yours, I shall have it. The Tachikan surrendered his cup with equanimity, or if his opened or drinking seal. Drinking, see. He wishes to. I had mosaic tiles somewhere for the difficult ones. Uh, bear with me, as that cheating costermonger at the market says. But Hachikan approaches with a plaintive burbling. 
plaintive, blurbling rather. Patachakan extends the tentacle. He wants me to take it. With intent. What intent? I hold held the tentacle for a fraction too long. Patachakan makes a resonant warble, deeper than any I've heard from him before. I have it. That noise means a recumbence is desired, but not... Oh. I see that I am superfluous. That shall be my epithet. Superfluous Barquidgin. Uh, bark, Barquidgin. Barquidgin is still for a moment. Then she rolls her eyes. Very well. I do recall this one. I accept the apology. Patachakan makes a plangent noise like a duck being deflated. A duck being deflated? I, I assume you mean like a rubbery duck? But no, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, what, do you mean, what do you mean a duck being deflated? I think this indicates contentment. This is followed by a series of trilling ululations. Ululations, rather. No, I would not ask that on a first visit. She glances at me. Perhaps if our new friend were to come again, that they might indicate by doing so that they are willing to entertain a request of such. Viscosity. My business is done. Arbitrary wait times. They watch me depart. I sense they wish I had stayed, but were too cautious to ask. Perhaps they might welcome another visit in future. It is a long and treacherous road back through the cavern, the cavern caves. Despite that, it takes exactly the same amount of time as a short conversation does. Because, whatever. Lock and gin. Horatia pauses. Something has been on her mind, I think. Who's your family? What is your home? When you say we, who is included? Protect the question for being too insular. I don't think that way. I don't draw a line between the people who count and those who do not. Maybe we includes all of humanity. Well, that's a, a, even a bit too narrow itself. Good to know you well. In God's sight, there is no east or west. We can't help nor rely on those who are too far from us. You'd be surprised. I mean, modern times, such things are a lot easier than before. And nowadays, although nowadays, although in our current stage, the surface is perhaps a bit out of reach. Well, maybe not entirely. Push her to broaden her own sphere. This is the sort of thinking that makes people unkind to foreigners in the downtrodden. My father brought me to England. My blue-eyed cousins tried to make me dine in the kitchen before he set them straight. I'm not unkind to strangers, but I learned from that. Know my own folk and keep the bonds tight. They had a reason defense. I present several elegant paragraphs of rational arguments for my view. My theses are logically ordered, my syllogisms are robust. I looked over for my own first and the rest of the world later. Alright then. Perhaps there was too much to ask. Indeed. Alright. See, that's the kind of choice I'm looking for, you know. Being able to really challenge people on their on what they're doing or what their philosophy. You know? Not the crap that was happening down in the basement with the books. This is the kind of stuff I enjoy. I mean, being able to go on like a whole ta philosophical tangent and everything. Anyways, tell Horatio what I found in the Amber Wars. Also, where the fuck is Grizz? I went to the caves below the sinkhole, looking for the men with tentacles. Thank you. I'd have gone myself if I could. Full of undulating wigglies ready to undermine London's cellars. Horrible tentacles oozing forth to pull us from our beds? There wasn't anything connected to our basement. Oh? I met a rubbery man. 
explain about Barkogen and Bat Batachakan. I suppose it stands the reason we're not the first down here. Can't be just devils and masters and what have you, but ordinary sorts too. Well, as ordinary as a man that looks like something found dredged up on a hollow ship can be. Seems a sorry fate to lose your home twice over. I hope something can be done for them. Okay then. <laughs> this uh, whole, whole romance aspect seems a bit uh, stilted. Un a tad unnatural the way it functions. A bit weird. I just want to see how stuff developed, you know? It is the end of confessions. Morning, I wake up to furious pounding on the front door. Rachel is already talking to Grizz and Horatio by the time I get downstairs. I'm Rachel Landau. I believe you know Archibald Raid, the doctor, right, right, well enough to know he didn't kill anyone. I'm not certain of that, and my brother was certainly dead. But you were quick to make accusations. I've come to ask your help, and maybe to free your friend as well. But I best not let myself be drawn. You have a way of freeing Archie? I think David might not be, that is, I think he may not be dead anymore. I keep having dreams that David is awake in his coffin. It was one uh, source. It was once revealed to me in a dream. I can barely close my eyes without thinking of it. I don't dig him up and make sure I'll never have any peace. They've come to us to help dig up your brother's coffin. Yes. I have a shovel in the basement, mostly for coal, but it will do. Why she didn't bring her servant? Where's Phoebe? At home, in bed. She's not up to much lately. She sobbed and asked what will become of us, and counts her rosary beads. Anyone would think that it was her brother that died. Curious. You are Archie's friends, and you want his name cleared. So you have, have reason to try to find David alive, even if I mean nothing to you. She glances at me, as though she, to say she knows there is more th between us than that, even if she doesn't choose to say so in front of anyone else. More, but what is she implying? Mm. Help, but let Rachel know she'll owe me one. Mm. I'll find a way for you to pay back later. Thanks, Captain. Here. There's only a fresh mound of earth. You're sure this is the one? It's not marked. I left these stones. Alright, let's get to digging. Rachel takes her own turn with a shovel, but it needs a hand from each of us. It's grim, slow work. When we struck the bottom at last, Grizz climbs into the grave. Well? It's been a few days, I. Eh? Grizz calls up from above. David is still deceased. You're sure? Hmm. That's an ingenious way of checking for life. You could put a cold mirror under his nose and see if it fogs. Don't go about with a mirror on my person. She reaches up her hand out. He hasn't decayed much, there's no smell. If I touch him, his skin is, well, not alive. Oh. I might still wake up later. Oh, he hasn't woken up yet, but if people are returning from a state where they appear dead, he's currently in a state that appears dead. But that's not to prove he won't return tomorrow, or the day after. Don't. Friend. It's not kind to encourage false hopes. No, it's a fair point. Thank you, Grez. Rachel, you said that you were drawn to this by rumors and dreams. Did either tell you how soon to expect David back? That we shouldn't rebury him yet. I thought we would find him awake, or just wakening. Milton said once the laws of life and death down here are not as they were above. And so I thought, 
I don't know. Whatever he implied, your brother isn't returning. It's most likely a mistake. I believe Mr. Mirrors is to blame for sending dreams. Perhaps uh, you'd think so. But no. Discourage Grizz making everything about the ministry. For once, Grizz, this isn't about Mr. Pages at all. We can go. I'm sorry. It was foolish of me to think there could be anything in it. Grizz and Kiddo should see you back home safe. Oh, the video. I just grabbed a container because I'm going to separate out some donuts for you. Okay. Okay. Check my messages. Did it say something? Yeah, it did. It should be, it should be done soon. Okay. Hopefully, as so long as the damn event doesn't drag on any longer. Alright, because I also have more vegetables for you. I just grabbed. <laughs> you don't need to do that but I'd be grateful for the company you've had a shock Phoebe Phoebe we have guests wait did we rebury him or did we leave him unburied or un unearthed I'm not certain I think we left him unearthed but that would probably be the smart thing to do. Well, maybe. We aren't guests. Don't worry about refreshments. I had you digging up graves. The least I can do is offer a pot of tea. Phoebe! Probably asleep, the baggage. Hi! Hello. I let myself in. So we just missed him, then. You were dead. I was. And now you aren't. Not for the past couple of hours. It took a little time to return. And then you weren't here. How is this possible? I was truly dead, and I have returned. The paths of life and death are not as they are on the surface. That is the only explanation I can find. The question of the grave remains alarming. There was a corpse there. And you don't much resemble it. I didn't wake in my grave. I came to myself standing in the midst of London. At one moment I was crossing the last river, and then the boatman put me back ashore. The last river? The last river? Yeah, like I said. There was a boat full of the dead, and the boatman carrying us all to the far shore. I found myself there, after the agonies of poisoning had ceased. I don't believe I have the pleasure of your acquaintance, Miss Smith. I am a clerk of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. I was hoping Miss Landau. We were trying to dig up your port. I dreamed you were alive. That you were trapped in there. I knew it might only be grief, but I dreamed it again and again, so vividly. We should make a list of what to do. I will alert the Ministry that death appears not to be going as usual. And someone needs to inform Hajit that Mr. Landau is not dead, and therefore Archie is not a murderer. But what about the what about the matter of the corpse? Whose corpse is that then? Or did he, or was it his corpse, but it was moved somehow? No, that doesn't make any sense. What? Someone did murder me. I was poisoned. It was excruciating. He really was completely dead. But he isn't dead now. So therefore, that is not a murder. It's an attempted murder, though. Whoever did it might tr try it again. And I can't be sure it wouldn't work. Believe me, I still very much want to know who the culprit was. I rather hope you might know who did it. Take charge of the questioning. It would help if you could describe what you remember from the beginning. Don't leave out any details. Anyone that could have given it poison you. Anyone that gave you anything that you ingested. Or anyone that might uh, could have been able to inject you with something. Anything. Anyone who might have had access to your food and drink. I hardly ate anything that day. Only the medicine that Archie brought me. I wasn't feeling well from the beginning. So I stayed in my room to read. 
There was quite a parade of visitors in the parlor, I collect. A parade? I had Ivy Fitzclaret here working on a fitting. She was hardly a visitor, and we were not in the parlor for the most part. Though she may have passed through. So Miss Fitzclaret was here on the last day. And Archie visited. You know that, as you blamed him for the poisoning. Rachel and Phoebe were at home. And I believe I heard Milton's sticky tones from three sets of doors. Milton did pay a morning call. And it was not long and I was preoccupied with Ivy. And yes, the devils certainly are experts at poisons. Well, I, maybe not experts, but they do carry poisons around with them quite often. They drink them themselves. Have you heard of Amanita Sherry? I drink that myself, It's but to most people it would be a deadly toxin. At least in sufficient doses. I held a brief conversation with him and then excused myself. He spoke with Phoebe for a few moments and then departed again, I believe. Right. And when Archie was with you, he didn't do anything strange. Nothing to make you think he had a sinister intention. No, his bedside manner was much the usual. He had moments of melancholy. He often spoke of being homesick. But otherwise, he only showed a concern to see that I was better. Although the flavor of the medicine that day was a trifle different. More like other ordinary medicines I'd had before. He said it was a change in the ingredients available. Ah, uh, yes, I could imagine him running out of the more high quality ingredients. And that he had to compound his own down here. Hmm. Could be accidental poisoning then. Could be that he simply made a mistake. Or, uh, or maybe not even a mistake, maybe just. Or, like, not even, like, an normal mistake, but, uh, but, like, maybe some of the ingredients were not normal in some way. That's a little troubling now I've thought of it. More than a little. I'm sure it's only a coincidence, and the meaning was just what Archie said it was. Alright, what precisely did you consider? And you ate nothing, David. No, only Archie's medicine. No drinks? No tea with a bitter flavor and a gritty texture at the bottom of the cup? I would certainly have noticed. I thought as much. One always has a sense of poisoning victims being ex especially unobservant. Hmm. Odd that you didn't eat anything at all that day. Well, it might have been early in the day and you skipped breakfast, but... Huh. Curious. Or he might be hiding something. Perhaps to protect someone. We should go home and leave you to a conversation. I imagine there's a great deal to say at such a reunion. Maybe. Maybe some... Perhaps someone poisoned him and he knows that they did it, but he doesn't want to reveal them. Perhaps, perhaps he spe is specifically trying to get Archie in prison. Maybe, maybe this was a plot. Maybe he knew that he wouldn't die, or that he would sur that he would come back from the dead. He did seem a bit odd when he came right here. I I chalked it up to to wonderment, but it might have been something else. I'm under this a great deal to say at such a reunion. You will let Constable Singh know the murder is no longer a murder. I wouldn't want the matter to be dropped. It would be the most grotesque miscarriage of justice to hang a man for murder when he did no such thing, and his victim is still walking around in London. True, but it's still attempted murder, which is a lesser crime, admittedly. I will tell Constable Singh. Gracious. When you came to us for help, you said it would... Be it would help us free Archie. It's true. I did. Then pray honor that commitment. That was a rash promise. 
It seemed reasonable, and they needed help. Can you see any of our cousins agreeing to come down and take a turn with the shovel? No, and especially not the Landau cousins. Such a betrayal of tradition. But thank you, and give my thanks to Mrs. Smith as well. You were truly a great assistance in a terrible time. It was, if it was Archie who gave the fatal, fatal dose, then something will have to be done. But of course, we will say it wasn't murder. You may say it wasn't. Again, attempted murder is a separate crime. And certainly it was assault and battery. Wait, actually. Hang on. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, I d I'm not entirely certain about the legal system of England during the late 19th century, but it's certainly a, uh, it's certainly a crime nowadays in England, so I don't know. At the very least, attempted grievous bodily harm, or even just grievous bodily harm. Assault and battery, or some such. It's certainly a crime. I'm just not entirely certain which. Rachel Landau has sent a note of thanks. Wait a few days before paying a visit. There's no rule for how soon to visit the deceased after they return to life. They'll need to recover. Never mind. At least Archie will be home soon. Archie does not return. This place remains empty. Horatia cooks him a portion, but he never comes to eat it. After four days, Grizz tries to argue her out of doing it anymore, but she insists she can afford it, thanks to me. What is an Eden goes to hungry neighbors in the morning? And she, Horatia, doesn't welcome interference in how she runs the house. Since the fall, every season is freshly alien. The season of confessions goes out, taking with it many helpful self-deceits. Yule brings the first full horror of the Naeath. People stop pretending when an animal speaks that it was imagination. Dogs, it's true, still say very little. This is what passes for tact among dogs. Cats have no such compunctions, the vulgar creatures they are. On the rooftops, they trade in human secrets and their side glances dare us to object. Hypocritical gossips that we are. Two hundred and ninety-one days since the fall. Fourteen days remain in the season of Yule. It is as I explained to Horatia and to Lady Griselda. By the terms of the law, a murder was still committed. Ask Khajiit about Archie's condition. Is he well? I worry about him in prison. So far as I can tell, Archie is happier on the Ungulate than he was before. He is a hero to the other prisoners. The trial will still be held just before Christmas. There is nothing I can do. There is nothing Landau's can do, either. Miss Landau did send a letter to the court to explain her brother's change of circumstance. What exactly did you do? I've spoken to everyone I could find. I woke an old judge from his bed in the middle of the night. Also, wait a minute. What exactly are they going to... Hang on. Hang on a second. If this is considered murder... Well, doesn't it warrant the death penalty? You get where I'm getting at. If this is If a man dying and then coming back to the the dead is considered murder, then a man being executed and coming back from that should be considered his sentence carried out in full. <laughs> Life hack. He did not take to it kindly. Complain he did Thank him for his effort. Thank you for trying. It was all I could do. Archie will be tried. If we can account for his innocence, he may be free. If we find evidence that someone else was involved, they may be added to the trial. If you find anything, if you have a good explanation for how it wasn't Archie.
You'll be the first to know. Thank you. Alright. I need to craft my theories the way Archie showed me. If I can't build a finished plan, I'll at least be able to come up with some hypotheses. Crafting theories about an unknown motive or method will give me the right questions and let me get answers out of people. The more I learn, the more I'll be able to refine what I ask, or the accusations I'll be ready to, I'm ready to make. I am always glad to visit Archie on the HMS Ungulate with you. I see you as one of my closest friends. I know it may seem strange, but I've come to rely on you. Not strange. I am alone here. But there was a time when I had companions. Strange to think of it, but there was a time when I was inseparable from my old friends. And cousins. They were numerous. Cousins. I cannot pretend to be a whole gaggle of cousins. That's an interesting... Numerous cousins. Probably he's just talking about, like, the usual sort, but there's another way that could be taken. If you don't know, I advise you look up the, t the term snuffer on the Fifth City Wiki. I am grateful, my friend. You're one to have on my side. I understand the Ministry will punish dishonesty. I embrace him. Careful, there are spiked objects under my uniform. Snicker. <laughs> are there indeed? Weapons of several variety. I'll bet. My work calls for me to go into abandoned houses and one would not be wise to go unarmed. Well, you're certainly not unarmed if you get to adrift. Alright, finally a save point. Bloody hell. A lot has happened. We didn't manage to PRT so far. But we have been unearthing the dead, and that's a worthy practice in and of itself. So, we'll have to do a lot more detective work then. In fact, I'd say that the detective work really starts in earnest here. But, until next time, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very P. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason su subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, suckers.